In this lesson, we will learn about IP addresses. For a computer to be connected to a network, it needs to have an identity using which other computers can communicate to it. This identity is given in the form of an IP address. It is a logical address assigned to a computer. It is called logical address because an IP address is not hard-coded to one specific computer. It is similar to your mobile number assigned to your cell phone. The mobile number is not hard-coded to your cell phone and you can change the number at any point by changing the SIM card. Mobile numbers are unique to each user in a country. Similarly, the IP addresses should also be unique to every computer. So how does this IP address look like? We are very comfortable in identifying if a given number is a mobile number or not. That's because they follow a standard format. Similarly, IP address 2 have a standard format and it looks something like this. The format of an IP address is four numbers separated by dots. These decimal numbers are formed because of 8-bit binary. Each of these 8 bits are called octets, that is, having 8 bits. As we see here, an IP address has 4 octets and in total 32 bits. The lowest value of an octet can be 0, that is, all 8 bits represented by zeros. The highest value of an octet can be 255 that is, all 8 bits represented by 1s. With this basic information, can you identify which one of these are valid IP addresses? First one, 10.100.34.68. It is definitely a valid IP. 60.400.34.68. It is not a valid IP address because the value of each octet should be between 0 and 255. Here, the second octet is 400. Third one, 90.0.34.68 is an valid IP address. 1.1.1.1 is also a valid IP. 255.255.255.255 You are correct, it's also an valid IP address. 12.80.120.6.5 is not a valid IP address because an IP address should only have 4 octets. This one has 5 octets. Next, we will learn about the subnet mask. But before that, let's understand that an IP address has two parts in it, a network part and a host part. Network part tells the computer what network it belongs to and the host part is its identity in the network. This separation of network part and the host part is decided by the subnet mask associated with each IP address. Think of subnet mask as the family name or the surname of the computer through which it identifies which network it belongs to. Similar to an IP address, subnet mask is also 32-bit long. The main difference being, the subnet mask will always start with continuous ones, and when it shifts to zero, it remains zero till the last bit. In fact, this is how it decides the network part and the host part of an IP address. Till the bits are running one, it represents the network part. And when it turns zero, it represents the host part of an IP address. Now let's apply this to an IP address. Consider the IP address of 99.255.200.45. The same can be represented in binary like this. In order to decide the network part and the host part, we need the subnet mask. Let's say the subnet mask is something like this. First two octets are complete ones and third and fourth octets are zeros. This subnet mask can be represented in decimal as 255.255.0.0. .0 .0. 
as we have learned earlier till the point there are ones it is the network part the point where zero starts it is the host part the ip address along with the subnet mask is often represented like this however there is a more common format to represent the subnet mask it's called the cidr format cidr stands for classless interdomain routing in this format the subnet mask is represented by a number between 1 and 32 like slash 16 or slash 24 where 16 and 24 represents the number of ones in the subnet mask so the above ip address can simply be written as 99.255.200.45 slash 16 okay you might be wondering why should we bother about subnet mask what is the use of subnet mask in the first place subnet mask helps in network segmentation consider this example where there is a group of computers with ip address of 192.168.1.5 192.168.1.30 192.168.1.90 and 192.168.1.120 Also notice that the subnet mask for all these IP addresses is 24 which means it has 24 ones in the subnet mask which further means that the first 3 octets are considered as network part in the given IPs 192.168.1 is the network part and that's why we can call this as a 192.168.1.x network where x represents any number between 0 and 255 Now let's consider another set of computers with IP address of 192.168.5.11, 5.20, 5.37 with a subnet mask of /24. And notice all the systems in this set belongs to 192.168.5.x network. Similarly, we have the 192.168.20.x network as well. Now here is the interesting part. computers within the network can communicate to each other seamlessly but computers in one subnet cannot communicate to another computer in a different subnet this is called network segmentation this is widely used in networks to separate different departments in a company or different types of computers in the network now let's think of an opposite situation where you want a computer of one subnet to be able to communicate to a computer in another network this is achieved by network gateways a network gateway helps a computer in a network to communicate with a computer in another network consider the subnet we just looked at if we want computers to be able to talk to each other we need to place a gateway which connects the three networks notice the three ip addresses assigned to the gateway when a computer wants to communicate to another computer in another network it just sends the request to the gateway and gateway routes the traffic to appropriate subnet so in short we could say network gateway is a network device that connects two networks it is time to put all the learnings to use now so where does one use ip address subnet mask and a gateway yes these are all the details any network device would need to be part of the network and they are ip address subnet mask and default gateway which can roughly translate to what is my identity in the network which network do i belong to and how can i go out and communicate to other computers in another other networks here is the ip settings that appear in a windows machine and we use the command ip config to check the ip address of a computer all right it's time to put all this into practice now with a lab activity